Hi, and welcome to episode 11 of my Eratos Beginners playthrough. Today we're featuring the Blood Phantasm, a new unit for our roster. Huh, your, your weird frontliner, dude. Um, the Blood Phantasm is a very frontline-oriented unit. Let's go through the skills. Uh, you know the drill by now. This feature is on his death he will heal the allies, making him a very good synergy with people like the Lich, who are um, benefiting from, from, from the death of the own units, or at least provoking these events. So first skill, one step forward, double attack on the first uh, two slots. It's quite nice that this uh, move is being able to be uh, done from every slot in your formation. Upgradable to more damage directly or more damage on crit. Pretty straightforward and useful. Phantasmal Assault has a quite low damage, a double attack with a vigor uh, restoration on every attack. Upgradable um, uh, to more vigor per strike or more damage per strike. This is a wonderful skill, making the Phantasm pretty tanky, because the ability to heal yourself uh, for 18 Vigor each time you do that, pretty nice stuff. Transfusion, a stance which enables a healing whenever the Blood Phantasm takes damage for the other allies. The amount of healing is scaling off the Phantasm's attack, which means buff the Phantasm's attack and you buff the healing. You can increase the amount of healing or you can buff your allies with attack and dread. This skill is pretty interesting on its own, but I think it will really start, start to shine once you use uh, two Phantasms in your formation where you can trigger that event more often because there's no mark on them or such. It's, it's just random if the enemies attack him. It's quite useful when it uh, triggers, but you can't guarantee the trigger. Mark of Retrib Retribution, um, you mark a minion and the enemies get a counter smack uh, consisting of magic damage. Upgradable to um, marked enemies get attacked more often and uh, more damage on counter smack. This is an odd skill, but you can use it to great effects because you can funnel the enemy's aggro onto somebody who will um, not only counter attack, but only, but also you can define to use somebody like the uh, Dark Knight or such good stuff. Chains of Anger, your regular uh, direct attack skill, um, scaling off of buffs and debuffs. We have that mechanic quite often in this game, so nothing real new here. The only real interesting thing is uh, that this skill is a backline skill, so you won't use that from the front line. Uh, last but not least, Hate Eternal, shoving the Blood Phantasm two steps back, a AoE with uh, an Ignite for the whole enemy team for the rest for, for the remainder of the battle. Upgradable to um, extend the duration of all... <laughs> it's a new one. So it'll extend the duration of debuffs or uh, it'll just uh, cost way less wrath. Overall, this makes the Blood Phantasm to a unit that's uh, pretty healthy in every um, area of your formation, and I really like to use this guy. It's pretty versatile, and you can even do pretty specialized tactics with that. So I'm going to open up this one because, you know, the drill, featured unit, and such. Okay. So I want to go for the Rage Injection because I really like the uh, buffing aspect of the skill there. And last off, I'm going to uh, upgrade the Impaling Charge. I don't like the crit mechanic too much, uh, it's uh, too much randomness. So of course we're going for more attack, but let's uh, aim for some accuracy as well. And more attack, come on, let's, let's pump up the attack as much as possible. And a little bit more luck. Okay, so what do I have here? Extra stress damage. Hmm, a burning effect. No, I'm going to use the acid gland because this is one uh, of the more. Uh, this is the big downside of the phantasm that um, armor and resistance counter this guy pretty hard because none of these skills uh, counteracts or shreds armor or resistance so 
it's that. Okay, so let's serve up the first formation. I don't want to use the Lich because I don't want to lose the Phantom here. So what do we use here? I want the Phantasm at the front place, that's for sure. Apart from that, what units do I have? A good old Skeleton, come on. Let's use it with a Skeleton. Skeleton here, and... Uh, no, not the Banshee. We're going to do some uh, good old damage combo. Hmm, hard to decide right now. I'm going to go for this formation here. No uh, huge synergy, but not too shabby either. I have two ability points on the skeleton. He was living in the arena for quite a while, you know. So, smite the show-offs. I really like that skill. And Mystic Fortitude. Yeah, that was uh, exactly what I had in mind. I really like the skeleton as it is. It's such a great multi-purpose uh, unit, which serves so many uh, uses without being overpowered. It's uh, really great. Okay, nice. Um, do I have buff stripping here? It's pretty important for me. Yeah, Necrotic Wind. Stance removal. Okay, we should have everything now. So let's get into battle. Um, oh, boys, this is uh, quite some nasty stuff already. Oh, Act 3 is pretty rough, so let's hope everything will go fine. From here on, I can't guarantee. Some uh, Sometimes things just go south. So we have a rogue. We, we introduced that guy in the last episode. Uh, the Elven Ranger, also pretty nasty stuff. Crossbowman, uh, the heavy armored fellas, and new to this whole thing is the Bard. Um, bards are true to their nature uh, supporters. So I really, I really feel th these guys are just disgusting. You want to kill them as soon as possible because uh, their buffing ab abilities are really hard to uh, ignore. So I'm going to go for Mystic Fortitude. And, um, well, I'm going to buff the bride. Hmm. And my first move will be to, um, oh, I have, I can't do this. I wanted to buff the minion with a mark, but we can't do that. Because <laughs> the skeleton is immune to that. No. I'm going to uh, go for the Wrath Eternal first. I know that I won't hit the Bard with that, but um, I wasn't able to reach the Bard anyways, so I wanted to remove the uh, ward on her and, and do some follow-up follow hits while doing damage on the whole party there. I think that worked out just fine. Because as long as the Bard is up here, her buff, debuff removal, and that's that. Good old Skelly tanking that for us, though. Okay. So I'm going to do some good old Hail of Teeth. And... Yeah. Okay. I just want to try to fire some insanity into them, if possible. Okay. Let's do the back row attack here. And she's stripped of her armor, but well, that's not really, not really uh, an issue here. I'm, I'm just uh, focusing all my uh, damage into uh, into killing the bard first. From from there on, I'm going to uh, do the fight a little bit more uh, differentiated. But right now, she just needs to go away. Because if you look at that. Uh, Okay, it's already gone. Uh, the Bard can buff a enemy unit to uh, get a 40% damage bonus on her on the next attack, and that's just uh, outright disgusting. Okay, but uh, that's that. 
that's I, I strongly advise to uh, to 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 work with bards like that because they are really dangerous. So let's drop down the ignite again, and uh, I'm going to use the spectral fog here. Use the movement abilities of my formation a little bit. There we go. <sighs> Sadly, I need to stop with uh, the with the blocking stance here. The HP of the skeleton are just dropping way too low at this point. Um, can I hit that now? So I'm going to uh, focus the rogue next because uh, his finisher feature is quite a bit troublesome, considering that my uh, minions are getting lower and lower. So I don't really want to have trouble here with that. So impaling charge forward now. Oh, that was the wrong skill. Oops. I'm so uh, <laughs> I'm so used to these uh, stress formations that uh, oops. Okay, I'm really concerned that uh, Skelly won't survive that fight, but uh, oh, whatever. Ah, he was a, uh, of course. So sp dropping down some spectral fog on the skeleton. I really like that. Uh, skill because it can buff the skeleton even though he's immune to buffs but this will still increase the evasion okay so forward as you can see the phantasm does some uh, considerable damage even to the uh, armored target here but i think skelly will die i mean skelly died quite a while ago but uh, that's another story so death grasp Somebody had to evade something. Okay. Last guy standing. I don't think uh, I'm going to have trouble with that. There we go. Some good old-fashioned damage over time. It's a lot of dot on his uh, on his face now. Okay. I'm trying to spam as much uh, Phantasmal Carnage uh, uses now as possible to heal up the, fan the Blood Phantasmal a little bit more. So there we go. Uh, no brains for us, sadly. So, well. And basic Skeleton died for us. I don't mind. I really don't mind. Oh, I'm, I keep forgetting that stat. By now, you guys are getting used to that, I'm pretty sure. So, I'm going to create another uh, Blood Phantasm to uh, upgrade my Mortuary here. Now then, let's heal up our friends a little bit. I don't need to do that. Okay. I'll just go for a little zombie here and a uh, shade. Nah. Oh, no, no, no. I have another idea. We're going to combine that with a ghoul. That sounds like fun. <sighs> Let's go for this combo. I really like that one as well. Some mixed, uh, some mix-up of uh, damage and stress is pretty good. Going to go for some distillation again. There we go. M mainly because I want to keep the blood phantasm in my uh, formation, just so we can continue with this uh, run like we do. I'm going to upgrade the no stance because it's, this is a great combo. This is just a great, great combo. More initiative, I do approve. Okay. 
So, next fight is basically the same stuff as we did before, but uh, in another... Uh, Oh, another another order. So the Blood Phantasm is an is a very good companion for uh, damage oriented formations, but he can't uh, offer any uh, stress based uh, things. But that doesn't matter. We don't need that every time. So I'm going to knock some hail of teeth on that, and I immediately will. Uh, Oh, I did that wrong. Oh, or no, actually not, because I don't want the ghoul to step backwards. I want to keep these two guys in the uh, in the back row. Mm, a mark. So. What's that? Highly increased chances to be attacked. Yeah, well, that's a very good uh, moment to, to drop down the mark. Because, come on, they'll attack the uh, Banshee anyway, so what can we possibly lose? Let's do the little debuff shout. And uh, I'm going to let the uh, guy here step forward. There we go. Uh, sadly, the damage just got negated, but uh, what do you expect? So, what's that debuff? Loss of evasion. Ow! Well, luckily the uh, the ghoul is not uh, that vulnerable in that department. Okay. Uh, just like the last time, focusing all my efforts into the bard here. I'm going to go for the fantastic coinage. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to go for a desolate stream on this fella uh, to destroy his uh, damage buff. Wonderful. Banshees are such good supporters, even if your uh, formation is not uh, oriented on uh, killing people with stress damage or such, it's still a really uh, powerful thing. I could eat the bard, but I don't want to uh, waste the drop chance here. The ghoul has a, a meal in, in the belly, but oh man, I really... Uh, did I just kill my... Mm. I have a bad feeling. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So, okay, the ghoul will get another turn before uh, she'll die. That's good. <laughs> okay. Alright, I'm going to go for the Rage Injection here and do some really nice combo. Uh, so I'm going to attack the Blood Phantasm now, heal the Ghoul, trigger the Blood Phantasm. I just wanted to do that at least once in this video because I really like that combo. It's so good because... Uh, reasons. I don't need to explain further. Okay, now we can need to get rid of these guys. Um... Going to cr uh, to to focus down the crossbow men, um, because this guy is just uh, the um, easiest to kill. He has no evasion, and these two guys has have evasion, and also the crossbow man has the most damage in his pocket. So I'm going to do more screams on this guy to fill up my mana. My main idea plan behind that is filling my mana. What a smack. So, I can ignore blocks, but... Uh, I don't have uh, enough means to uh, 
break armor here, so maybe I'll change my plans. Or, oh well, I'm, I'm doing enough damage here, it's okay. So there's another mark. Well, let's go for the Aura of Retribution again. Wow, this, these guys deal so much damage. So I'm going to do some little Absorb Fear and uh, bring up some mana here. Uh, well. Let's do a full HP Restore. Nah, I felt like that would happen, but I needed to try at least once if it, uh, if it at least would break through the armor, but no. Ooh, stop critting her. That's rude. Screaming this guy. Oh, I totally forgot about that skill. Silly me. Oh, that was not that, that was not well played. You probably saw that, right? <laughs> Oopsie Daisy. Well. Ah, oh, that's why that's the reason why I didn't want to focus the other guys. Oh, okay. Oof was a really uh, concerned for the well-being of my ghoul there for a moment. Of course you miss. So, oh, I can't do that from here. Damn. Okay. Whatever. Oh yeah, blinding this fellow is a good idea. There we go. So this should uh, diffuse this guy a little bit. And he goes to a, to a retreat here. Holy! Oh, so many crits! That's why I keep losing uh, minions quite often uh, the further the game proceeds. Let's use the chains, we're in a good spot here. And... Oh, sadly she uh, missed that one. But I pretty much expected uh, to miss that. Okay, we're going to heal up. Okay. So... It's quite uh, easy to see that the blood... Phantasm is a very versatile unit which uh, fulfills her spot in very different ways. Um, with Market for Attribution you can do considerable amounts of damage as you saw. It is a very good skill to counter marking effects of the enemies. Okay. So let's uh, drop these friends on the healing bench and uh, do something else. So, what's up next on the table here? Oh boys, we're facing an elite squad. <laughs> okay, so... I'm going to uh, drop the Blood Phantasm here because I want to go for a uh, stress setup. And... Oh well, stress setup won't be good. I need something that's able to focus focus down the bard. <laughs> Cause the elite bard is basically uh the same, just worse. Okay, we're we're going to do this. Blood Phantasm, Hunter. And uh What are my options here? I do have a mummy. How good good does the headhunter work from the back line? Catch him, sense him, yeah, seething wrath, bloody harvest, 
bounty. Yeah, they are options. This guy is working from that slot very, very well. Okay. So, uh, what's the plan? Use the mummy here as well. Remove all buffs from the enemies. That sounds like a good plan. And go for the bride to have some uh, stance removal as well. That's good. That's a good one here. Okay, so when do we do it next? Crow paw. Okay, this guy's already uh, equipped completely. Um, doing stress sounds great. Uh, I do want the Dark Knight, but well, no, not gonna happen. Headhunter only. Okay, I don't. Uh, I'm. I'm not going to be able to equip that. So, uh, hmm. yeah, why not? This is more damage for the bride. And why not the ashes for the blood phantasm as well? I'm really racking up my uh, things here. As good as I can. Okay. No, I'm not going to go for a distillation here. But let's see what a one-time use item we're going to bring here. 100 Wrath, Bundle of Dynamite, that's not going to be useful. The uh, Bard will just heal that up in no time. Warp of Vulnerability, sounds pretty nice. When the minion dies, all allies recover vigor. That's pretty good. <laughs> At the start of combat, all enemies must pass a sanity check. Let's do that. If I'm lucky, I'm going to trigger insanity right off the bat, and do my uh, and and cons and do a, a lot of. Um, I'm going to make that combat a lot easier. Sorry, sometimes words just uh, don't work anymore. Oh, I oh, oops, I had a talent open. So all of them went bonkers. Nice. So we have now. What do we have here? Panic, chance to skip turn, minus 50 accuracy. Wow. Um, weakness, decreased damage deal, dealt, received increase. Unlucky, cowardice. Ooh, okay. Nice. That's a real good one. Good one for uh, for us here. So. Let's drop down the Hail of Teeth to remove the blocks here and uh, attack the Bard right away because I have really no time to uh, ponder. Um, sadly, I can reach the Bard, so I'm going to attack the, uh, the Rogue here, mainly to heal up my... Uh, my blood phantasm here so i'm going to catch him uh to do catch him on the bard to get her in the front row whoa okay maybe i won't do that again <laughs> i didn't expect that to happen all right um that was really really bad um let's drop down some curses on these guys we're, we're not, not hitting that anyways okay I'll uh, I'll keep that in mind that the bard is doing some really friggin nasty stuff uh, when she's uh, sitting on the first slot of the formation okay let's bound you her oh, well. the dot will do the rest so we're we're done with that part okay nice Let's let's keep going. Uh, that was uh, just an un. What the heck? Fifty percent of evasion, though. Okay, that's why. So let's 
So I'm going to use the Sundering Wrath here because I don't I, I don't think it's a smart idea to uh, hope for a uh, lucky uh, hit here. use the uh, Retribution Aura here. I really like that skill. So... Wow, these evasion values are such a nightmare. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. I'm missing so much. No. Not my mummy. Let's see, if I'm lucky, uh... I'm going to get a chance to, to save that guy. I'll stick with the Rage Injection and just hope that uh, somebody will... will attack my uh, other guy. So, next move is for the uh, Crossbowman, so let's just kill him. I mean, that solves the problem as well. Headhunter's damage is just insane. <laughs> okay, seems like uh, I've won this uh, this elite fight. No, oh. so happy he skipped twi his turn twice. Uh, okay, bloated flesh. At the start of its turn, the minion restores six vigor for each unfilled squat slot. Such insane things for, for unfilled squat slots. See that so often. I should really uh, consider doing formations around that concept because the game really invites me to. And there, there has to be a reason. It has to be good if the game uh, insists on me doing that so much. All right, friends, so I hope this episode gave you a nice overview about how to use the Blood Phantasm. I really like the guy in general, but also I, I dislike the guy because he's such a generalist. It's a double-edged sword for me. Well, let's do another zombie, oh, just as I hoped. Um, it's just a physical damage dealer with uh, with a lot of supportive abilities, but overall, the Blood Phantasm feels a little bit like a generalist to me. It's not really necessarily a bad thing, but uh, you'll need to take more effort uh, to define your formation by a Blood Phantasm alone. The Phantasm goes more with your formation. Let's compare that with the Lich. The Lich defines your formation way more. The Lost Soul defines your formation way more. These are minions which uh, have a quite dominant skill set. The Phantasm is not like that. But maybe that's also what I'll... Uh, mixed feelings, you see? So, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Feel free to drop me some comment down below. I would deeply appreciate that. Let's learn the finger of death before we leave. Um... I would also uh, like to invite you to help me with this video by liking it, sharing it, or even subscribing to my channel because that would mean a lot to me. But if don't, if uh, if you don't want to, don't, I don't mind. Just keep watching. It's the most important part. See you next time. Bye bye.